Hi everyone, I hope you like the introduction. The, this is Khaled with you and uh, today will be our first lesson for the fundamentals of programming which will be talking about designing a program. So before we start, I'm going to introduce you to some of the important terminologies which is pseudocodes, flowcharts, algorithms, program design, syntax errors and logical errors. Maybe some of you will be familiar with these uh, terms and uh, others will not be. We will go through them one by one um, immediately after we reach uh, them in the slides. Now, designing a program. Designing a program is very important uh, part of uh, software, software development life cycle because it will give me a brief idea about what is going to happen. So if you see, it is the first step in our SDLC, which is the software development life cycle. First of all, we need to design a program to know what is going on, how I'm going to do the coding. I need to uh, gather myself, put my ideas together, uh, put them in uh, logical steps, and then I will start to write the code. When I finish the code, I need to see the errors, and I will correct my syntax errors. What do I mean by syntax errors is the errors that have spelling mistakes. So for example, instead of writing uh, uh, x equals y and then uh, following up with the semicolon, I will forget the semicolon. So this will give me a syntax error. Also in English, we have syntax errors like grammar, uh, uh, spelling mistakes. Let's say if you uh, type distinguished in a different way, this will give you also a syntax error. Uh, we will deal with this when we write or start writing the code. Uh, step four is we will test the program after we finish uh, correcting the errors. And after that, I'm going to search for any logical errors if there. And logical errors are errors like if uh, instead of writing greater than, I will write uh, less than, uh, missing the plus sign or replacing it with a minus by mistake and uh, whatever. So this is the software life cycle and design, as I said, program design is one of the most important parts of the program development life cycle. We need to understand everything what is going on. We need to be uh, knowing the task that the program will be doing or performing. Then after that, we need to determine the steps that we uh, <clears throat> must do in order to finish my program. And these steps is like uh, creating an algorithm, different type of algorithms and also breaking down the required task into series of steps okay so basically algorithms are um, series of steps uh, the definition is here uh, it's a set of well-defined logical steps that must be taken to perform the task of course I need you to look carefully in uh, logical steps so they must be logical okay uh, what do I mean by logical is that for example, you can't brush your teeth, then wake up. Um, you cannot like uh, eat your breakfast while you're sleeping and so on. So this is a simple example. You cannot uh, browse um, any website while your telephone or mobile is uh, turned off. This is what I mean by logical. So it must be logical steps. Uh, pseudocode is the next uh, term that I'm going to deal with, which is a part of an algorithm. So pseudocode is uh, derived from the algorithm. So it's a kind of algorithms, okay? Pseudocode is a fake code. It looks like a programming language, but it is not at all. It is an informal, simple English language. So we can use whatever we want in pseudocode. You can use any terms you want simple English language you just like you're talking with someone or asking the computer to do something uh, it is not compiled or executed so I cannot test it because if I put it in some compiler in a Python language or any other Java language let's say it will give me a lot of errors because it is not um, uh, formal uh, it is used to create a model program okay so it is like uh, uh, a design that will lead into the code okay it will help me to put my uh, ideas together so uh, you don't need to worry about any syntax errors when you do the pseudocode at all 
because it is not going to comp be compiled <clears throat> it can be translated directly into an actual code in any programming language because the concepts are the same I will just translate the simple uh, English language into uh, a specified code we will see an example this is an example uh, that we need to write down the steps of us that uh, we follow in order to open Facebook or Instagram or any uh, social media website so the first uh, thing we need to turn on our devices then after that we need to browse this website or click on the application it depends on the device I'm using after that we need to enter the username the password and then click login okay then we can browse so this is the pseudo code for uh, uh, us opening uh, Facebook website flowcharts are the other part of algorithms so we have two kind of algorithms the first one is pseudocode the second one is called flowcharts the difference between them is that flowchart is a graphical representation so it means that we can see a drawing instead of uh, typing and many people like to learn by viewing some kind of drawing or charts instead of reading uh, plain English text this is a small example about a flowchart and I will be explaining the whole uh, parts of this flowchart in the next slides so every flowchart consists of several concepts uh, the first one is ovals the ovals are mainly terminals and these terminals are uh, represented or displayed at the beginning and at the end of each flowchart so it is a must that every flowchart must have two terminals or two ovals one at the top the second one at the bottom the next uh, concept is parallelograms and we know this in math it is used for input output operations so for example if I am reading printing uh, inputting getting a number displaying printing everything um, that use these terms will be inserted into this parallelogram okay the next one is the rectangle and there is a difference between this rectangle and the parallelogram because the rectangle it takes only the mathematical operations that has plus minus the assignment statements that has equal uh, equal signs any processing operation will be inserted into a rectangle the diamond box represents a decision so usually in the diamond box we have a question inside let's say did you pass so we have also two options yes and no if yes it will be directed into the right side if no it will be directed into the left side and so on so usually it is a question inside did you fail did you pass um, did you get a high mark did you go uh, did you have your license and so on uh, flow lines are the lines in between each uh, of the contents okay so it will connect the flow chart elements okay this is easy and it will be used everywhere and the last thing is the connector and this is in case you are doing a very big flowchart and you don't have space in the first page so you will connect it into another page and so on hopefully you will reach this level now there are some rules in order us uh, to do a flowchart the first thing is that the flowcharts are drawn from the top into the bottom okay so it goes uh, vertically from top to bottom all boxes of flowchart must be connected with a arrows or, or flow lines if you see in the example on the right all of them are connected to each other so there is no skipping or um, just removing these flow lines uh, the flowchart starts with a terminal and also it ends with the terminal the decision box which is the diamond box okay it has two options which is yes and no and uh, we talked about this one in the previous slides uh, this is an example of an algorithm if you see this, this algorithm will be adding two numbers 10 and 20 into some so the first thing we need to do is to initialize some to zero so I may I need to make some equal to zero 
because then I will add the two numbers. If the sum is 5 or 10, it will be adding these two numbers into the 5 or 10. So it's better for us to make it 0. Um, then we will enter the numbers, which is 10 and 20. Then after that, I will add the numbers together. And then I will store them into the sum. And finally, I will print or display the sum because I want to see it. If you see, these two are terminals. So they are like ovals. Initializing sum into zero, there is an assignment statement. So we put it into a rectangle. These are input, inputting numbers, entering number into somewhere or into the computer is input. So we use this parallelogram. Then we adding the numbers and store them. So it is a process. So we put it into a, a rectangle. And finally, printing is also output statement. So we will insert it into this polygram. This is the way that we will draw our flowcharts. I have a challenge question to you. Do you remember the question that we handled before, which is uh, logging into Facebook? Okay. So now, guys, I need you to do, um, as a practice, is to draw a flowchart of entering Facebook, considering that the user might enter wrong password. So he needs some time to try. How many times? What are you going to do? Keep in touch and let me know if you need any question. Thank you very much and hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson again. Bye-bye.